Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. As I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I believe it was the uh, one year of art improvement video, I said I was going to redraw this picture that I completed um, on April the 5th of uh, last year, so 2016. So I decided that I wanted to redraw this picture because at the time I was very proud of how it turned out but um, I feel that I've improved a lot in the last year and that being able to uh, directly compare a new and old version would be kind of cool. So the method that I used to complete my newer version of this picture is very similar to one of the methods that I used to complete a recent cat pet portrait and I'll leave a um, card to that up here somewhere. Um, so you can check that video out if you're interested in the process that I used. If it wasn't made clear in the title or thumbnail of this video, during the time lapse I'll be discussing my top 10 tips or for improving your artwork, or rather the mindset around your artwork. Of course, as always, this is my own opinion, but I'd love to hear your opinions on the subject in the comment section down below. So without any further ado, let's get to the time lapse. So the first tip is probably one that you've heard all too often, and that's to practice regularly. So the more time that you set aside for practice, the faster you'll improve, and I find that that's all too true. Uh, using your time efficiently is also something to keep in mind. For example, mindlessly doodling isn't really going to improve your uh, observational skills as fast as it would be if you were to draw from uh, real life or from a reference photo, for example. So yes, practice regularly. Every day is the best, of course, but if you're really, really busy, then um, just try and practice a certain amount of times a week or set yourself some kind of schedule. Everybody has a little bit of free time, and if you don't, then you can make time. So for example, in my case, I stopped playing video games and used the time that I would spend playing video games um, on drawing instead. You can draw whilst watching movies, or waiting for the train or the bus, or you can uh, draw whilst watching TV programs. If you like to read, you can listen to audiobooks whilst drawing. If you really like to draw and you really want to improve your drawing, you will find time to draw. My second piece of advice is to set achievable goals and set timeframes if you find that necessary. So look at your art and find an area to improve or explore upon and set out to work on it. Um, this can be anything like contrast, value, colour choice, composition, accuracy, proportions or anatomy, detail, texture, the list is endless. I find that it's really helpful to write down what you like and dislike about something that you've produced, or make a mental note um, if you're able to keep aware of them. This will make it easier to keep track of the goals you set yourself and also when you meet them. Goals can be more abstract too and not necessarily about you actually physically drawing. So for example, it could be improving your analytical skills or your creativity, for example. Or they could be less to do with the artistic process, so for example, watching or completing two tutorials a week, or keep a sketchbook, or fill one. But it's really important to keep challenging yourself. Feeling accomplished and feeling like you're taking steps forward is really important and can help motivate you to take further steps forward. My third tip is to use all available resources. You don't have to be part of an art class or an art club in order to um, find helpful information about art. Watch YouTube video tutorials, um, watch streams and speed paints, ask other artists for advice. For example, there's a really good um, Facebook group that I'm part of. Um, it's the Luckery Artist group on Facebook. It's also on Google+, Plus, but it's run by the um, art artist on YouTube called Luckery Fine Art. I'll leave a link to her channel and the group in the description box below. You can ask for advice and constructive criticism there, which I find is really helpful. You can also ask the people working in your art shop what um, materials they recommend or how to use them. And reading art bloggers can also be a great source of insight. Personally, I really like to watch tutorials whilst I'm doing something else, like housework, or even whilst I'm doing art. I find it's really helpful to constantly try to absorb relevant information. You can be learning about art whilst you're not drawing too. The fourth tip that I have is something that I know a lot of people struggle with, and that's keeping motivated. What I do is I find sources of inspiration and I save them. All sorts of things can be inspiring, for example colour palettes or composition ideas, subjects to draw, um, what interests you outside of art, do you have some reference photos that you like, or challenges that you want to try? 
Is there a theme or concept or style from a previous piece that you'd like to rediscover or reinvent? Or even it could just be some new mediums that you'd like to practice. For me, not being motivated or inspired to do art isn't an excuse. If I can't think of something to draw at the time, I will find something in the library of saved reference photos I have or sketches that I could further develop. It might not be so much that I want to draw that thing, but it's rather more like I feel that, I, that it's the least um, terrible thing to draw. I find that the biggest hurdle is usually just trying to get started and making a choice, and then the inspiration will come after that. If the problem is too much choice and you have too many things in your mind that you want to draw, try a limiting challenge, so limiting the amount of colours you have or um, what mediums you can use, or narrow down what sort of thing you'd like to draw, so think about textures or lighting or composition, colours, those sorts of things. And when you're in a creative mood, um, plan things that you'd like to draw ahead of time, and just doing something means that you're taking steps forwards. Point five is a tricky one, it's to be reasonably critical of your work. You don't have to like everything that you create, but if you don't like something in your artwork then you should try and pinpoint it. Is it your sketch accuracy, proportions or anatomy, or is it uh, your contrast value or if you're using the correct colours? Is your detail or um, composition? And if you're not sure where you're going wrong, then you can always ask other people. Using that artist group that I mentioned beforehand is a really good uh, tool in this. And it's important to remember that there is always a next time and there's always a better piece of art that you'll make, so don't get down about your latest piece. I always try and remind myself that learning happens through experience and mistake making. So a mistake made is a lesson learned. But on the flip side, we have point number six, which is to be proud of your work. Be proud of the individual pieces you make or your entire collection, and if you can't, be proud of the developments you're making or that you're enjoying the process. Most importantly, don't throw away the work you don't like. There might be something there that you can see the beauty in at a later date. Keeping old work will also help to s you to see your improvements, so although you might feel awkward about um, one of your latest drawings, maybe in the future you might appreciate seeing it. My point number seven is to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. I think that it's really important to tackle the things that you don't like drawing or struggle to draw by also drawing those things too. For example, I was really struggling with human portraiture and really wanted to get better at it, but the idea of um, drawing humans was kind of overwhelming at first. And I found that the longer that I left it, the more of a gap there was between my ability to draw people and my ability to draw hum um, to draw uh, like pets and animals. So in other words, the, the gap between your comfort zone and your discomfort zone uh, makes the uh, new challenging topic a lot more difficult to combat. When you're drawing something new, just recognise that your skills in other areas are also applicable to um, what you're drawing now. Apply your knowledge and try and think about what you do know rather than what you don't. Point number eight is another one that can be difficult to talk about, and that's avoid comparing yourself or your skill level to other artists, especially with what you see on social media. A really good quote that I think summarises nicely is something that I've recently heard, which is don't compare your bloopers to somebody else's highlight reel. Remember that with social media, um, people only really present the best image of themselves. Every artist is making mis mistakes and um, making stuff that they're not proud of. Um, almost every artist that I've seen is insecure about their art in some way or another, um, no matter their skill level. Another excellent quote I've heard is, don't compare your beginning to somebody else's middle. Try and remember that skill is the amount of work and effort that somebody has put into their work or artistic journey, and that it doesn't have much to do with age. I find that it's especially easy to be jealous of people who are much younger that are already extremely skilled, but then I think that maybe they've already had 10,000 hours of effective practice, or maybe they've been put into the best possible circumstances um, or situations to gain that artistic knowledge. Like maybe they have a really good relatable teacher, or um, some artistic member of the family who can help them. But yeah, rather than uh, being envious of these kind of people, try and learn from them and remember that it's very unlikely that they'll be 
um, any direct competition between um, the two of you. All art is different and people like different art and different styles for different reasons. So try and see other artists as peers and allies rather than competitors. But it is okay to be envious, just don't let it stop you from doing what you love and what you love creating. Tip number nine is uh, work on lots of smaller or shorter pieces rather than things that take months and months to complete. So do lots of sketches or um, you don't have to complete uh, larger pieces, you can leave them unfinished if you want. Personally, I find that being able to quickly move forward uh, keeps things fresh and it keeps possibilities for improvements open. I find that it also allows for more experimentation too. I think that feeling like this piece has to be perfect because it's huge, intricately detailed and or you've already spent a hundred hours on it can be emotionally and creatively draining. Not everything needs to be a masterpiece and smaller projects can be satisfying too. My final tip is to start a social media account where you share your art. It can be any social media, um, but personally I really like uh, Facebook and Instagram. But I think it's really important to put your art out there, even it's, if it's just um, to friends and family at first. I've found that even if I'm not confident or particularly proud of my piece, somebody somewhere is going to like it and admire it. And i found that that is a really big confidence booster. For me, having a small social media following has really helped motivate me to produce drawings more regularly um, because I see that other people are enjoying some of my work as well. It's tremendously helped my self-confidence, but um, it also makes me think more critically, critically um, of what I'm making and how I can improve. Um, but I must admit though, sometimes it's a relief to produce something that you know you're not going to upload to social media. Um, because the pressure for things to be um, as good as possible can be kind of stifling, so find what makes you feel comfortable and supported. So here is the drawing in its completion, and here's the old drawing. Let's see if I can get them both in frame. So hopefully you can see that there's an improvement. Um, I think the biggest improvement that I can see is in the proportions. These, as I said in my previous video, um, looked very human-like and although I thought it was accurate at the time, it's clearly not. Um, there's also a lot more detail and um, I definitely paid more attention in the fur direction. This isn't right, whereas this is more correct at least. I also uh, think I improved in the way that I uh, have chosen the composition for this picture, although this has cut off the cat's paw which is I don't know, it looks a bit weird, but um, this is definitely not anatomically correct uh, whatsoever. As you know, I used colour pencils and a white Posca marker for this piece, and for this piece I used Inktense pencils both wet and dry, and it's apparent there's limitations to this medium, but I definitely feel like I could do a better job uh, with Inktense pencils now than I did before. Both pieces took a similar amount of time, this piece took somewhere between 5 and 6 hours to complete over a course of um, I think a few days, 3 or 4 days. And this piece I did um, in a couple of hour, 2 hour sessions, so I think this took me about 3 or 4 hours. So overall I think that my drawing accuracy and skill has improved and my knowledge of uh, mediums has also improved, but also my efficiency in using my time has improved. There are things in this image that I'd like to improve upon. For example, I think that I could have gone um, a lot more saturated with the coat colour. Um, it could have been a lot more orange or deeper red, kind of a ready brown colour. The anatomy is fairly close, but I think I've made the ears too large and the muzzle could be slightly wider. Um, there are a few inaccuracies here, but then I did it completely from grid method, whereas usually when I'm doing a pet portrait commission, I would check everything with a tracing. I wanted to keep this challenge fair and considering I didn't use a tracing to check my accuracy for this drawing, I didn't want to use a tracing to check the accuracy for this drawing either. So I hope that you found this video interesting and helpful. Please leave it a like if you did. I'd also like to have some feedback about my new microphone or audio setup and how you think my narration sounds this time. I'd love to hear your opinions on my tips in the comments section down below. Share this with a friend if you think they'd find it helpful too. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.